Reworks are a scary thing when it comes to League of Legends. On one hand, you have a champion who is oftentimes failing to either deliver a healthy gameplay experience to the game, or a champion whose idea was amazing but the execution back in the early 2010s didn't give the champion justice to what they could be. Either way, reworks generally not only make the champion stronger due to the modernization of the kit, but also usually turn them into a mommy or daddy because Riot will sexualize anything if it means appealing to the Chinese market. <laughs> And when it comes to really old champions, Riot has a hard time because this champion has existed in their current form for so long that if they miss the mark, they've just deprived an entire player base of a champion that they used to love and risk losing all of them as potential customers. Skarner's rework was not only one of the most needed reworks in the entirety of League of Legends because, let's be honest, his old kit was about as good as that one pair of earbuds that only worked when the cord was at certain angles, but it was also one of the most important reworks because we waited over two years since he won the poll to get the rework and he was one of those champions like Aatrox where almost nothing from his old kit was going to be kept. So this new Skarner needed to be great, because old Skarner was generally countered by a single item, he didn't have a reliable way to get to his priority target for his ult, and if he wasn't fighting near a pillar, then he basically didn't feel like a champion. And so many people were hyped for this rework because of how needed it was, because so many things really needed to align well for old Skarner, and if they didn't, he'd be about as useful as a brand new winter coat when you live in the desert. But the new Skarner doesn't have that weakness. He's stronger, faster, more durable, and better in every way than old Skarner. To call this rework a success would be downplaying how amazing it is, because new Skarner feels amazing to play and doesn't feel like you need everything to go right in order to be a champion. He feels like such a menace on the rift, and being able to turn into Ryan Gosling every time that you use his E to drive around is one of the most fun abilities that Riot has made recently. Not only that, but the fact that his Impale is now AoE is a so amazing. But I'm getting ahead of myself, because the kit section isn't until later in this video. As someone who was an avid fan of Skarner pre-rework, I can confidently say that this rework is going to go down as one of the biggest successes in terms of reworks, just like Fiddlesticks and Nunu. Say what you want about his new lore that gets rid of all the bad and unethical things Piltovens did to the Brackern. Say what you will about the fact that he's now an Ishtali champion, and not a sad boy but now a paranoid boy. His rework is so solid in giving new life to the champion and making him feel so impactful to play in every single game. I love the old Skarner, but the new Skarner has so much more to him that I absolutely believe makes this rework one of the best. So join me as I discuss the amazingness of this champion and the honest truth about Skarner, the Primordial Sovereign. I am Skarner of Clan Opaline. Progeny of Broodmother Nishale, and I will be your undoing. Skarner's lore has changed a lot from what it was, but he's still a Brackern. Born to the Brackern clan Opaline, Skarner was a progeny of Broodmother Nishale. Through his own curiosity and her tutelage, Skarner perfected the Brackern's innate ability to shape the Earth basically making the Bracker now into a more powerful version of the Badger Moles from Avatar. Through this, he learned how to read vibrational patterns much like Toph, and could sense incoming settlers as they approached the Brackern's home. While the rest of his clan did not trust these outsiders, Skarner's curiosity got the better of him, and he needed to know what made them tick. In Skarner's eyes, these people lived such short lives, there one second and then gone the next, but he was fascinated by how they used these short lives. However, he soon learned just how fragile humans are. One day, a rock slide threatened to end a small Ishtali settlement, but Skarner decided to intervene, and when the humans gazed upon him and began to revere his massive form, a protectiveness of these beings stirred within him. As he saw it, they couldn't survive without him. He no longer observed humans from afar like a teenage boy peeking through his neighbor's window, instead he lived with them. He helped to construct their cities where the planet's lines of power connected, and he was a founding member of Ishtal's ruling class, the Yuntal. And so it was through Skarner's protection that Ishtal flourished. However, Outside of Ishtal, the Shuriman Empire stormed the continent using the Ascended. His belief in the resourcefulness of mortals was shattered as he saw the darker side of humanity. Corruption, driven by a lust for power. Skarner urged the Ishtali people to not accept an alliance with the Shurimans, but the Yuntal eagerly accepted. 
After the Acathian Rebellion, where the Void was released onto the world, Skarner felt vindicated in his beliefs, even if it came at the loss of many lives. At this point, Skarner felt nothing but disgust for the world outside the jungle, considering it to be a wasteland of pain and suffering. A wasteland made even worse by the Rune Wars, as after witnessing the destruction caused by them, Skarner convinced the Yuntal to use magic to shield their jungle from the outside world. While his faith in the Yuntal was shaken, Skarner was still committed to being the protector of the Ishtali people. He constructed a chamber for himself underneath the Ishtali capital, a place where he could hear each thrum of the earth, and hear that through his sovereignty, the people of Ishtal were still alive. However, being down there alone for so long gave way to paranoia from each and every thrum of the earth that sounded like a threat to Ishtal, and slowly the memory of Skarner faded, now only a myth to the common folk. But still, the Yuntal of today come down to his chamber to ask for counsel about the future of Ishtal. And now, with new Yuntal, talks of rejoining the outside world are spreading. But Skarner knows that this will only open the door to more pain, more destruction, and more death the same way it did millennia ago. He can't let that happen. He can't let these people hurt themselves due to their inability to see reason. To see his reason. Skarner will protect the people of Ishtal, even if it means destroying everything in the process. I love Skarner's new lore. Not only do we get rid of the messy things that were happening due to his old lore for reasons, but we also get to expand even more on Ishtal's lore, which I personally love. The idea of this sovereign who has gone mad and only sees their way of acting as the correct way and everyone around them isn't either doing enough or doing the right things is a type of character that really pulls on your heartstrings, especially when it's a character who started out doing what they were doing for the right reasons. Seeing the descent into this madness and the way that it affects the character as a whole is just so good and such a compelling character in my opinion. I give Skarner's new lore a solid 8 Scar big scorpion Scar emojis Scar out of 7. Skarner's passive is Threads of Vibration, and no, I'm not making a vibrator joke. I'm not gonna do it. I SWEAR TO GOD! Skarner applies stacks of quaking onto enemies whenever he hits them with auto attacks, either part of his Q or his ultimate. Upon reaching three stacks, the target starts experiencing what it's like to have one of those sneaky apps on your phone, and they take percentage max health damage over a short duration. While his passive is really simple, and it doesn't seem like it'll do that much, even with the amount of damage that it does, where the real power lies is in helping in extended fights and while clearing the jungle. Since the jungle pet's two attacks refresh whenever you do direct damage to a jungle camp, this passive is like Lilia and Brand, and allows Skarner to walk away from camps when they're at much higher amounts of HP to let the pet finish them off. It's also an amazing passive when you're taking Void Grubs because of how it interacts with his Q. Skarner's Q is Shattered Earth. Skarner rips a large boulder from the ground and empowers his next three basic attacks within a short duration, gaining bonus range, bonus attack speed, and dealing bonus physical damage around the main target of his attacks. Additionally, this effect is refreshed every time he auto-attacks. The third basic attack causes Skarner to slam the boulder into the target just as hard as that Toyota slammed into me when I was six, dealing additional percentage max health damage and slowing all targets hit for a short duration. In addition, during the duration of Shattered Earth, Skarner can instead cast Upheaval, causing him to throw the boulder in a target direction like he's playing hot potato with you except the potato is, well, a giant piece of stone boulder and he deals the same bonus damage and slows that normally would be applied if he slammed it onto you. Just like pre-rework, Q is Skarner's bread and butter ability when it comes to damage, but unlike pre-rework, you're not going to be developing arthritis in your ring finger because of how many times you need to press the Q key every second. Due to the AoE nature of the ability, you want to try and land the AoE on as many monsters in your camps as possible while clearing to apply your passive damage onto all of them. In addition, a big thing to understand is that this ability's cooldown starts when Skarner picks up the boulder, not when he throws it or slams it, meaning that holding onto it for a little bit while you travel between camps, prepare for a gank, or get ready to teamfight means that the next Q will be up sooner. This is especially good because outside of Q, Skarner's damage is kinda lackluster, so knowing how to maximize the amount of Qs you get is essential to doing damage as this champion, even while building full tank, because the damage does scale off of his bonus health. And that scaling is why as Skarner, I usually take Overgrowth and both HP scaling shards because as of the moment, it will always outscale the damage that you can get off of buying AD. Here's the math. 
Yes, I know it's a lot, so here's a picture of a puppy to even it all out. And like I said earlier, his Q is part of the reason why grouping up grubs or other jungle camps is so important because the AoE from the auto attacks applies his passive, meaning he'll get more damage off by making sure they're grouped due to the passive providing a good amount of damage. This ability is also just so fun, because seeing Skarna take a big ass boulder out of the ground and beating someone over the head with it is amazing. At this point, we need to start referring to Skarna as John T, because he's about a Rockefeller. Skarner's W is Seismic Bastion. Skarner slams himself into the ground, shielding himself and making a shockwave that travels out from beneath him, damaging and slowing enemies that it comes into contact with. This ability is, in my opinion, basic, but fine. It's basic because it's not anything new that we haven't seen. I mean, it's basically just Jarvan's W, but it also deals damage, but it's fine because it works well within Skarner's kit, granting him another AoE that you can use to damage multiple camps at the same time, slow down enemies from escaping due to its large rate and combo with shield bash like I usually do to increase the potency of the ability. Also, at the time of writing this script, the ability is currently bugged where it doesn't apply its damage or slow at the tip of the ability in the direction of your cursor, so look out for that. But I know the reason that you're really here. You want to know about the ability that literally turns you into Ryan Gosling, who is, by the way, literally me. Like, this picture here, this is literally me when I'm driving. Skarner's E is Ishtal's Impact. Skarner starts charging forward in a target direction, gaining slow immunity, becoming ghosted, and ignoring terrain for a short duration. During this charge, he gains rapidly increasing movement speed and is able to steer himself while moving. If he collides with any champion or large monster during his charge, Skarner latches onto them like they're the last PS5 during Black Friday shopping and carries them with him wherever he wants to go, gaining more movement speed when latching onto them. During this time, if Skarner makes the enemy champion collide with a wall, he stuns the target and deals damage scaling off of his max health and reduces the cooldown of Ishtal's impact. Skarner can also recast his ability at any time to stop the charge and he'll be stopped immediately if he's crowd controlled in any way as he's not unstoppable during the charge. GET OUT OF THE WAY! I'M FUCKING BOOZE CRUISING! This family of five is about to need a funeral service! This ability is just so fun because I never knew how much I needed the ability to just grab a motherfucker and then pin them against the wall like we're about to make out sloppy style, but I just kill them instead. Not to mention that the ability also stops your Q's duration timer from ticking down, meaning if you pick up your Q before using this ability and then hit a successful E, you've pretty much shaved off 5 more seconds off of your Q's cooldown, which in late game usually translates to having another Q off cooldown the second you slam the boulder into them. Sometimes you won't hit a wall with this ability, but that's okay as long as you try to steer them back towards your team or into one of your teammates abilities. I've had times where I wasn't going to hit a wall, but I could direct them directly into a new new snow ball and it was one of the sickest combos I've ever done. And then we both promptly died because it was a fed mid laner. And honestly, if you don't like this ability at all, then I don't like you. Get off my channel. Huh. Skarner's ultimate is Impale, but it's the cooler version of Impale compared to where it was. Skarner winds up while facing in a target direction, during which he is unstoppable and then lashes forward with his tail dealing match damage and suppressing up to three of the closest enemy champions. During this time, the targets are revealed, Skarner gains bonus movement speed, and is able to drag all the targets hit by this effect wherever he wants them to go. If he's currently holding his Q boulder, he'll throw it in the direction of the Impale when it's cast, and Skarner cannot use his Q, E, or Flash during the duration of the Impale. Making this ability AoE for Skarner's rework has to be one of the best decisions that Riot has made for any rework. The fact that even if people build QSS now, you still have the ability to drag multiple people is such an amazing addition to this ability. You do lose the ability to wrap the target around you for bonus range at the end like you could on old Skarner, but the AoE more than makes up for that. It has become this ability that is so much better for setting up your teammates than it used to be because the targets remain in a fixed distance from you as opposed to rubber banding like they used to, and now it really helps Skarner set up a wombo combo with his team and be this team fight menace I feel like he always should have been rather than a glorified R-Bot that gets fucked if people buy QSS. Now, even if multiple people buy the item, you're more likely to have them use it just for Skarner's ult, meaning that unlike old Skarner who could only impale one person and then other people would just have their QSS for other CC, you can now force up to three people to blow it at once. 
This ability is literally the be careful who you call ugly in high school meme because it's so much better in every way than it used to be. And this is part of why Skarner's rework is such a success in my eyes. Sure, they had to remake him from the ground up, but they kept something iconic to him and kept the Scorpion and Monster vibes around and turned them up to 11, in my opinion. His rework is so fun to play, and I'm sure after a few balance changes here and there, he'll be in a much better spot than he used to be where he had one of the lowest player retention rates in the game. Sure, he may no longer be our sad purple Crystal Scorpion boy, but he's now our large paranoid Stone Scorpion boy. And by the way he's driving, you know I'll be chilling in the backseat to see where he's going. Thank you everybody so much for watching The Honest Truth About Skarner. My name has been Tarin, and if you like this video, go leave a comment down below telling me which champion you want to see me do an Honest Truth About next. And while you're down there, go hit that subscribe button to be updated whenever any of my new videos comes out, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye!